Well, hello, my name is Martin Boddy and this is my wife Karen. Hello. This summer we went to an exhibition by Simon Baxter and Joe Cornish at the North York Moors Centre and it's the photo book from that exhibition that we're going to talk about today. Mm -hmm. I think probably we were attracted to the exhibition because it was Joe Cornish. We'd never come across Simon Baxter before. Mm -hmm. However, when we walked around and looked at some of the images, it seemed to be quite often that the Simon Baxter ones were the ones that jumped out at yes. us. I thought the, as soon as I walked in, the photographs just blew me away. They actually, it's the size of them. You just mm. felt you could walk into the mm. countryside, mm. the size and the detail mm. that they managed to bring out. Yes, definitely a difference between seeing the photographs in the exhibition and seeing them in the book where they're much smaller and don't have quite the same impact. That's right. What else was nice is we managed to get to go to the, the talk that um, Simon Baxter and Joe mm. Cornish did the next day. That was fascinating, hearing what they had to say about their images. Yes, what interested me about that was that they talked less about the technicalities of taking the photographs, which I think is what I'd expected, and much more about almost the emotional connection that they have with their subject, and that came across very strongly. Both of them are... Um, very much happy out in nature yes. and, and they, yes. they obviously have an affinity with the with the countryside yes maybe we should talk about one of my favorite images um, it's called afraid of time um, it's a stunning stunning image it's a tree in the middle of a forest spotlit by bright sunlight it's been ravaged by the passing of time and the events that have burned and twisted mm. it it looks mm. evil malevolent bitter and twisted what did you think Yes, very striking, isn't it? I mean, it, it really grabbed your attention when you went into the exhibition as it was one of the, the largest ones in there as well. The light in it is absolutely amazing oh. on, the, on the branches of that twisty tree and then the, uh, the misty light in the background. Very, very striking image. We know that Simon Baxter went back to this spot um, a number of times, <laughs> of course, before he managed to get this light. The tree itself has got a, you know, a malevolent look to it, um, but it's interesting in the context with the, the tall, younger trees surrounding it. I get the feeling that it, you know, the, the younger trees are watching it die. Yeah, well I think you could interpret it in a couple of ways actually. I suppose my first interpretation when I saw it was that that was the tree that was somehow quite evil and malevolent and spooky and the other trees were standing around looking at it you know maybe in fear and and awe but then i think also you could look at it from the perspective of it's the trees around it that have the malevolence they're almost trapping it and holding it in and perhaps they're standing there watching it dying in a, an evil kind of way. There's an eerie atmosphere and it's no wonder that once Simon Baxter got his shot he said that he really just wanted to get out of the clearing. Yes that one's definitely got a story to tell. Mm. I think if we move on to the next one it's more about the composition. Yes so the next one's Frosted Fragments which was one of the ones that I particularly liked when we first looked at the exhibition. It's not as dramatic as some of the others, but I think I was drawn to the minimal colour palette and it's got some very obvious compositional rules that even I can recognise. So it's a very um, prominent diagonal yes. right the way across from one side of the yes. image to the other. One side full of detail and the other side just completely negative. Yes. So it's a, a nice balance, almost symmetrical line yes. across there. And yes. The leading lines repeat in the rocks and the contours of the countryside. Yes, that's right. And, and the second level of trees, misty trees in the background repeat that line as well. It looks um, to me that the base of the tree is placed on the rule of thirds grid and the, and, the, and the diagonals lead your eye nicely to that point. It's a very low contrast image in terms of the colours but there are contrasts in the textures. There's a contrast between that solidity of the rocks at the front and then the fading away into the misty sky at the background and the tracery of the leaves on very, the Very, very delicate trees. frosted yeah, yes. areas on the tree. Yes. 
It's a very calm. It is, and I think peaceful. that's probably what appealed to me. But when I looked at it more closely, you know, it looks as if the, initially you just think the rocks are strewn on that hillside. And then when I look more closely, you can actually see that there's a little stretch of wall in some of the rock. And then you look a bit more and think, actually, some of these rocks probably were part of this wall. And, and then that kind of got me to thinking, was it a wall? Was it an animal shelter? Was it a building? Who lived here? What happened? How was it abandoned? So there's a sort of story behind it and that kind of feeling that, you know, humans were here, now they're not, and nature's just taken Re over and made it its own the, again. Reclaiming the place. Yes. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm.